Hello, my name is Chris and today I'd like to talk about that awful, horrible depression that can affect so many of us when we quit smoking. I grant you it doesn't happen to everyone. Some people quit smoking and the good times start to roll like straight away. They immediately feel happier, healthier, fitter, just better in general and that happens immediately. All the reasons why they wanted to quit smoking in the first place happen practically straight away. But that doesn't happen for all of us. For some of us there is another step between having that last cigarette and getting all that good stuff. Don't get me wrong, the good stuff does happen. We will get there. Magical things happen on the other side of pain. But before we get to our own good stuff, we go through this awful bout of depression that can feel like the worst thing in the world. And for some people that might manif manifest as like low energy, feeling tired all the time, having no motivation, not wanting to do anything, losing interest in things that we used to love. I know for me, a weird thing that always happens to me like when I go through a bout of when I go through a bout of depression is that all my muscles tend to get really heavy and like I just feel like li quite literally like the weight of the world is on my shoulders and life just seems very difficult. It feels like a pain to go through and all I want to do really is sit on my sofa, hide under the covers and just let this all go away. Again, the good news is that it does pass. The depression does not last forever, no matter how much it may feel like it does. It will go away. But look, I get it. If you're struggling right now, if you are dealing with a bout of depression, particularly one that's come after you've just quit smoking, it's easy to hear me say this and say, yes, yeah, so what? Okay, this might pass, but what am I supposed to do until then? That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to share with you a few reasons why we get this depression after we quit smoking and what we can do to make ourselves feel better. As for me, I've dealt with depression on and off since I was 16 years old. I'm now in my early 30s, so yeah, I've had quite a bit of experience with this. And it's only really been in the last year that I've really managed to, to get on top of it and to keep my depression at bay and to, to stay relatively calm and relatively happy for a long period of time. I even went back to school this year. I'm retraining now to become a qualified counsellor because I really want to help people who've had similar experiences with depression that I've had. So you could say this is a subject that is quite close to my heart. I've shared my experience, my story of dealing with depression in two videos that I made last year. I won't go into too much into that now but if you want to check those out the links are down below in the description in the usual places. But for now let's go on and talk about why we get this depression when we quit smoking and what we can do about it. So why do so many of us go through this period of depression in the first place? One obvious answer is that when we quit, we're going through this huge life-changing thing. And I don't think many of us give ourselves enough credit to say, do you know what, this is a pretty big deal that we're going through right now. Everything changes. For the longest time, we used cigarettes as a crutch for every situation. And now that crutch is gone and we're left, you know, basically to go and fend for ourselves. And that can, be, that can take a bit period of time to, to adjust to. Plus, there's the fact that we build entire routines around our smoking. You know, whether it's that we get up in the morning and we smoke, or we smoke after lunch, or, you know, even things like we have to plan to go to the store and buy cigarettes and, you know, smoke when it's our work break, or find friends to go out with for a cigarette, things like that. We have this whole routine built around smoking and then we take the cigarettes away and we're left to find this new routine and we go through this period of readjustment and it can take some time getting used to. 
I know for me, when I first quit, one of the things that I found took me a long time to get used to was when I'd be at work, I'd work for a little while and I'd maybe finish what I was, you know, set a small goal for myself and I'd finish that goal and then I'd go and have a cigarette and then I'd come back and I'd do a bit more work and then I'd go for another cigarette and I'd come back and I'd go for another cigarette. You get the idea, right? So then I quit smoking and all of a sudden it's like I'd finish a little task or finish a little goal and then kind of be like, what am I supposed to do now? There was no part of me that physically craved a cigarette. There was no part of me that actually wanted to go and smoke. But for so long I'd had this routine of work, smoke, work, smoke, that now that it was just work, 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 I, I was like, I felt empty, I felt lost, I didn't quite know what to do with myself. It was a very weird and very odd feeling to get used to. And I admit it did affect my mood a little. Another of the more obvious things that we can talk about is dopamine. Dopamine is, is the feel good stuff, it makes us feel good. We talked in many other videos about we smoke a cigarette and the nicotine shoots up, hits the receptors in the brain, sends all that lovely dopamine down. We feel, we may not feel amazing, but we certainly feel better than we did before we got the hit. So when we smoke, we spend all day getting these little dopamine hits, day or hour after hour, or however regular it is that you smoke. We spend all day getting these little pick-me-ups. Then we quit smoking, and obviously we're no longer getting those pick-me-ups, and we're no longer getting that dopamine. Because many of us, we don't replace it with anything. We don't do anything to make sure that we still get a nice dopamine fix. So because we're getting nothing that gives us all those good feelings, we're left feeling just bad and low and empty, and all that stuff that combines to make depression the big, murky, black, weird thing that it is. There is another explanation which I find really interesting, and it comes from a study that was published in 2011 which found that the, the withdrawal process from quitting smoking leads to an increase in our bodies of an enzyme called monoamine oxidase A, or M-A-O-A. -A. You'll never be able to tell that I couldn't say that half an hour ago. I've been practicing like mad before I turned the camera on. Monoamine oxidase A, M-A-O-A. -A. This is quite often referred to as the warrior gene because of its association with aggression and aggressive behaviour. Which probably goes some way to explaining why when we quit smoking many of us feel quite angry and tense and, and, and feel a bit aggressive. But MAOA is also, I really hope I'm saying that right now, but it's also associated with depression. And what it effectively does is it devours chemicals like serotonin. Serotonin is often referred to as the happy chemical because it plays such an integral part in maintaining our well-being and our levels of happiness. So this enzyme, this warrior gene, it's devouring those chemicals anyway. But then, because something to do with the withdrawal process from quitting smoking increases this warrior gene, it's eating more serotonin than normal. It's devouring it, it's depleting our reserves. So we're left with basically no serotonin left, or at least very minimal. So we have nothing that is regulating our happiness and it leaves us feeling low and empty and depressed. So those are the three reasons that seem to make the most sense to explain why we go through this period of depression when we quit smoking. But whatever the reasons may be, I want you to know that if you're going through this right now, it is okay, and you are not alone. The fact that I've even made this video and that other people besides you have watched it, hopefully, <laughs> shows that you're not the only person who's ever gone through this. You are not alone. And it is okay. 
If you are struggling with depression right now, it is not because you are bad. It is not because you are weak. It is not because there is anything wrong with you. It is because you are going through a big life-changing thing, a big transitional period, and you're going to emerge from this period better and stronger than ha and happier than ever. It might be an old cliche, but you can think of this period as being like your cocoon phase. Before you were walking along, you were a little caterpillar smoking your head off. Doesn't that visual just blow your mind, a <laughs> little caterpillar with a cigarette? And you go into your cocoon, which is where you are now. You are changing, you are evolving. You are no longer this smoker, this caterpillar, you are evolving. You're going to merge from this as the butterfly and life is going to be beautiful and you're going to be happy. Sounds good, doesn't it? But again, I know what you're probably saying to me, Chris, this all sounds wonderful. I can't wait to be a beautiful smoke-free butterfly. But right now, I'm really depressed, I'm really struggling. What the heck am I supposed to do? Let me share with you a few, a few things that have helped me to stave off depression long term and that helped me when I went through my own post-quit smoking depression. This big life-changing transitional period that we are going through takes a big toll on us, not just mentally, but physically as well. It takes a big physical toll on our bodies. So we need to give our bodies what they need to get us through this transitional period and keep us well as we're going through it. We need to give our bodies everything it can to, everything it needs to make us feel good rather than making us feel rubbish and lousy. So that means things like getting an appropriate amount of rest. You're likely to find as you're going through this depression whilst you're quitting smoking that you feel tired all the time, that you just can't get enough sleep, that you're just sluggish and, and just have no energy. Or you may find that it's the opposite, that you're wired all the time and you have this, this terrible insomnia where you can't sleep at all. I've made videos about both of these subjects and I'll put the links down in the descriptions, you may just find those helpful. Especially if that's what you're struggling with right now. Along with rest, it is important that we also give our bodies the nutrients that it needs to, to, to keep us well and to keep us feeling good as we're going through this period. It is very easy and very tempting when we feel low, when we're depressed, when we feel sad, to try and cheer ourselves up with, with sugary foods, with, with sodas, with, with sweets, with chocolate. There have been other studies done that have linked foods with high sugar content to increased levels of depression, particularly in males. So obviously that's not something we want because that's just going to make the situation worse. Plus there is the, the thing of, yes, we have some sugary food and we get the immediate sugar high and we feel a little bit better. But once that sugar is worn off, we come crashing down, we feel even worse. So that's not going to help us out in this situation. So we need things like fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, plenty of water. Although it may not be as exciting and it may not give us that immediate high like sugar will. In the long run it is going to make our bodies feel better. When our bodies feel better, our minds start to feel better, we start to feel better. We can then move on to the next stage of combating this depression. I get that it can be a lot more effort when it's, it's a struggle to even get off the sofa to go and like make a salad or steam some vegetables. But if you have some fresh fruit standing by, it's going to do you far more good. The second thing that we can do to help ourselves when we're going through this bout of depression is to give ourselves a new goal or a new challenge or just something new to focus on. A few months ago, I went to see one of my favourite bands playing in town. And in the build-up to the night, I focused so much on how, how good it was going to be. I was so looking forward to it. Every day I'd be listening to their music and watching their YouTube videos and tracking down concert footage. 
when the band started their tour I'd be on Facebook following them and picturing how good this show was going to be I was so focused I was channeling everything into how good this this gig was going to be then the day came and I went and they played for like three hours and I sang so much that I lost my voice it was amazing and then for a couple of days after I felt so low and just so despondent so lousy because I no longer had anything to look forward to I no longer had anything to focus on I no longer had something I was moving towards and I found that when I gave myself something new to focus on a new goal a new challenge it really helped the worst bout of depression I ever had I was I was suicidal and I wake up most days and wonder if is today the day that I, that I kill myself no today's the day that I do the same thing I do every day which is sit on my sofa watch Netflix and get fat that's basically all I did to get myself off that sofa to get myself out of this this black depression I needed a new challenge I needed something to focus on because I just felt empty I felt adrift I had nothing in my life that was worth getting up for in the morning so I set myself the crazy goal that okay I'm gonna go and get my mountain bike and I'm gonna cycle a thousand miles by the end of the calendar year I'm not saying that's what you have to do please don't be as insane as I am I did it I, I think on like December 29th I clocked up like 1002 miles but I didn't do it all in one go I sort of did five miles here and two miles there and ten miles here every day I get up and I do a little bit and I work towards this new goal I, I work towards this new challenge and it gave me something to focus on it gave me something to channel my energies and my effort and my attention onto it motivated me to get up and go outside and because of that the depression started to lift because I no longer felt empty I had something to focus on something that was worth getting up for in the morning again I'm not saying you have to go and cycle a thousand miles and I would encourage you not to unless you really wanted to if you really want to I'll be cheering for you the whole way but you can set a new goal or a new challenge or just give yourself something new to focus on even if it's just starting a light exercise program or going for a walk once a week or here's a good one trying that new hobby that hobby that you always wanted to try but could never afford because you spent all your money on cigarettes and now you've got this extra money now's the time to go and focus on something new it could be um, running a 10k or, or, or cycling 10 miles whatever it is that you can focus on give yourself a new goal a new target something that inspires you that makes you feel like yeah I'm gonna get up in I'm gonna get up tomorrow and I'm gonna to do this because it excites me so many things you could think of speaking of exercise and cycling and running and, and going to the gym and all that stuff exercise is the third thing that we can do to help ourselves I know again when we're at the worst of our depression getting off the sofa can be a huge thing in itself so again you don't have to cycle a thousand miles or even go to the gym but if you get up and go for a walk play sports and there's a sport you enjoy play that do you know what's a really good one put some music on and go and dance not like that don't dance like that <laughs> dance in a way that works for you I still do that to this day I go and put some music on and dance around it makes me feel good it gets the endorphins going gets the dopamine going we, we spoke earlier that one of the causes of this depression is that we're no longer getting that dopamine fix we used to get from cigarettes so we're low on that exercise is one of is, is the best and the easiest way to get that dopamine going again and yes dancing counts so anything you can do to just get the blood pumping and to, to get the adrenaline going is going to, to reap massive rewards for you it may only be one walk a week to the block and to the end of the block and back 
but it's going to it's going to make a big difference and if you can do it outside even better because the sunlight and the fresh air is going to to help again with the dopamine and the serotonin and all that good stuff that we need to make us feel good the fourth the fourth thing that we can do to help ourselves beat off this depression is to reframe the situation that we're, that we're in to reframe how we think about it it is easy when we are low to think well I'm tired I'm fatigued I feel so low this is terrible I can't be bothered this is never going to get better oh my goodness trust me I've been there I felt like that but we can take that situation and we can reframe it and we start to feel better about it so we say yes I'm tired and yes I, I feel lousy at the minute but this isn't a bad thing this is a good thing because what I'm feeling right now is me going through my transitional process and changing and evolving what I'm going through right now is years of addiction and toxicity and the abuse that I put myself through leaving my body and leaving my brain this is good for me because I'm going to emerge on the other side of this so much better I'm going to come out of this cocoon and number five the fifth thing that we can do to help ourselves when we are going through this depression after quitting smoking is to reach out and connect with someone I say this I'm the worst person for not doing it at the height of my depression I find when I'm low when I am depressed my energy is depleted I don't have much energy and talking to other people just drains me of it so I tend to to isolate and withdraw so that other people don't drain my energy but that poses a bigger problem because if I isolate and I shut myself off from other people what happens is that the only company I have left then are my own thoughts and my own thoughts are dark and miserable and depressed so if I'm spending all my time with thoughts that are dark and miserable and depressed I'm never going to get out of the habit or the situation sorry of being dark miserable and depressed I'm going to be stuck in this endless thing going back and you know just being stuck in my own mind so I learned the hard way that I need to reach out and talk to someone even if it's only one person for five minutes and I don't even have to talk to them about my depression of course it is wonderful to have that one person you can offload to to tell them all about how you're feeling someone who's compassionate and who will understand but I found it isn't necessarily about that it's not necessarily that that's what you have to do I find what helps me the most is asking about them talk to my friends say tell me how are your kids how's your work where are you going on holiday next year tell me about you and I listen to them and it means that I'm no longer stuck in my own thoughts I'm, I'm, I'm with somebody else the company that I have now is, is happy and upbeat or at least calm and peaceful not dark and chaotic like it is up here in my own mind so I need to connect with someone just to get out of my own thoughts and to be with another person I appreciate that if you're going through the worst of your depression right now then it is far easier for me to say all this than it is for you to do it I have been there where getting off the sofa something as simple as getting off the sofa is a huge thing so that's why I say to you that when it comes to overcoming this depression to start small I spoke earlier about setting a goal or a challenge again it doesn't have to be cycling a thousand miles if you're struggling to get out of bed or off the sofa the first small step could be just to go for a shower I know for me for me that a shower always makes me feel better anyway so when I'm feeling low it's one of the and I feel like I just can't be bothered it's one of the first things I will do just to go and take a shower then I might go and you know I don't necessarily have to overhaul my diet in a day but I can start small I can you know put the bag of sweets down and go and eat an apple then I might go for a walk to the end of the street 
these small things add up. Small things lead to bigger things. Bigger things lead to breakthroughs. We're not breaking down here, we are breaking through. We are gonna emerge the other side of this. The more we do to help ourselves, the quicker the depression passes, the quicker this transitional period is over, the quicker we start to enjoy all that freedom and happiness and health and wealth and joy and abundance. And we start to enjoy all the reasons why we quit smoking in the first place. As I said earlier, other people get that straight away. But just because we haven't, doesn't, isn't necessarily a bad thing. The fact that we've had to go through this depression and put a little bit more effort can reap big rewards for us. It might be that you focus on a new goal or on a new hobby and by doing that, you know, it has some big life-changing impact on you. You may even pick up a new hobby, go to the gym or something like that and meet the person who is your soulmate. You know, you might make big dramatic lifestyle changes about the way you eat and the exercise you do that has a profound impact on you, changes that you may not have otherwise made. I know for me, emerging from my depression set me on a course where I lost a lot of weight. I started making regular YouTube videos. I went back to school and retraining for a whole new career. Coming out of my depression was the best thing that ever, in fact, let me rephrase that. The depression was the best thing that ever happened to me because I emerged out of it and all this good stuff happened as a result. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you are really struggling with your depression, I would advise you to go and see a doctor or a medical professional. All I can say here are just tips and suggestions, but obviously medical help may just be the thing for you too. Please do leave me a comment. Let me know how you are doing on your journey. I always love hearing from you and I'm always grateful to be part of your journey, even in just a small way. Likes and shares are always appreciated. And for more videos like this on a weekly basis, basis, please do subscribe. That's all I've got for now. I'll see you next time.